Racial healing to me means that I am only as free as the person sitting next to me. So we should all come together because our freedoms are all intricately bound up in one another's. Welcome back to Studio B in New Orleans. Behind me, you can see a painting by Brandon B. Mike Odoms called My Little Generation. It shows a present day New Orleanian confronting an artifact from the past when segregation was a rule from water fountains to schoolhouses. On their first day at the new school, Minnie Jean Brown and eight other black kids found an angry mob and the National Guard blocking the schoolhouse door. It was 1957 in Little Rock, Arkansas, and the teenagers were trying to integrate Little Rock Central High School. They tried three different times over the course of a month. General Walker, commander of the division, was asked to delay the entrance of the Negroes for a day to let things cool off. But General Walker decided, no, this had to be done. Finally, backed by 1,200 soldiers, they made it inside for their first full day of class. Minnie Jean and her friends were known as the Little Rock Nine, and we remember them today as heroes. At the time, they were just kids trying to learn amid a torrent of abuse. White students called them names, spat on them, hurled hot food at them, even sprayed them with acid. One day, a white girl hit Minnie Jean in the head with a purse, and Minnie Jean responded by calling her white trash. For this one misstep, the school expelled Minnie Jean. White students passed notes that read, quote, one down, eight to go. Minnie Jean Brown, now Minnie Jean Brown Tricky, would end up finishing her education far from home in New York City. She had spent a lifetime thinking about racial healing for the country and for what she herself endured in trying to push the country forward. We were ordinary teenagers and we were interested in changing something. And we believed that we could. Thank you. It's so great to have you here. That's Seriously, great. it's amazing to have you here. Absolutely. Um, we also have Pulitzer Prize winning Nicole Hannah-Jones, who's the creator of the 1619 Project, who has stuck around. Um, the term racial healing can feel abstract, I think, to some, but in your case, you were 14 years old, undergoing just tremendous um, trauma. What has it meant for you just in your life? I think it's meant that I, I didn't want any other kids, no matter who they were, no matter what color, any, to, that to happen again. And I think that's what I've done as much as I could with my life. I teach nonviolence. I interact with kids as often as I can. I have great conversations uh, in different parts of the world as well as the U.S., but I just, just wanted to pick up on your last session and say, what is it that everybody thinks that this stuff is new? Mm -hmm. This is not new. Uh, Japanese incarceration, of course, you talk Chinese exclusion, indigenous genocide, um, just the whole hatred. Um, I keep hearing people talk about death threats. Huh. Really? Death threats? <laughs> Constant. Um, that's the, 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 the game to try to scare people out of whatever it is they're doing. And I, I have a story about my three-year-old brother answering the phone and somebody saying, we're going to come burn your house down, we're going to kill you and all that. And I thought, ultimate depravity to do that to a child. But that's the nature of kind of evil. Um, Bonhoeffer, who was a Holocaust victim, says, to speak is to act, not to speak is to act. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have this whole concept of people standing by and doing nothing, which is also... Uh, but anyway, so that's where I am. It's not new. It breaks my heart, as it breaks the hearts of many of us. Uh, and I'll do what I can. And so much of this beautiful space, yeah. these people here, you two, 
this woman, I mean, we're changing it whether they like it or not, <laughs> right? And that is your legacy. Um, and, and, and I think about the bravery that you had to show as a teenager just to go to school. And I, I do wonder what your mom said to you uh, as you were tucking your books underneath and heading into that hostile environment where moms were screaming at you, where people's moms were yelling, cursing at you. Um, what did she say to you to prepare you for that? What, did, what was the thing she said before you set off? Uh, it pretty is, it's pretty does. You're smart, you're talented, and they're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to bring you into this, Nicole, because the thing that you two have in common um, is that you've both been on the receiving end of rage for doing something that's very simple, right? Sort of asking people to, or trying to learn, or asking people to learn. Hmm. And that seems like such an elementary thing to, to do. But the hate has been unreal. I think both of you experience it. And I just wonder how Miss Minnie Jean's story falls with you. Um, I feel very emotional. I, I, I have studied uh, your photos, um, your heroism. I know you don't like when people talk about your courage, but um, on my worst day, I don't understand what you went through and so many people in the movement. So I don't even feel like it's justified to give any comparison at all um, to anything that, I, that I've gone through. And I always reminded myself of that, right? Whenever I want to feel bad because something has happened, um, I think about, you know, my grandmother was born on a cotton plantation. And I think about people like uh, Miss Minnie Jean, who, to be clear, right, we, we want this to be so far in the rear view mirror. We want to act like that was so long ago. Why don't we get over it? Um, Nobody wants to get over this more than black people. Right. <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So when I think about, about healing, I think who really needs to heal are white people. I think that the idea, you know, yes, we, we have gone through a lot. We have experienced a lot of trauma. We are still being harmed. But the people who cause the harm are the people who need to do the healing, the reflection, the fixing, right? And um, because really, if, if we were just left alone, we'd be healed by now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I just, yeah, I, I, I'm so I'm grateful um, to just be to be in your presence and to be able to tell you out of my own mouth what everything that you did has meant um, for someone like Joy and myself to even be in a yeah. room like this having these conversations. Amen. So I'm just well, thank you. honored. And <laughs> okay, so uh, activism is a life sentence. And <laughs> I love that. Really, because there's always something. Um, there's the environment, there's, there's, I'm an env arrested environmentalist. I've gone to jail because I see all of this as related and it is out about power. Now, one of the things, uh, for instance, Little Rock Story usually has one page in American history books mm -hmm. for young people. Mm -hmm. What a denial of our children because it's so complex that they could learn all yeah. about courts they could learn about mob violence. They could learn about persistence of the human spirit. Uh, just they could learn about journalism, actually. And yet we deny our children truth. And they love truth. They desire truth. Yeah. So, so we have an obligation to give them truth and give them complexity. So this is how I see what I said earlier tonight, the 1619 Project took something that usually took a page. That's right. When the Daughters of the Confederacy said it in my history book at Central High School, they said slavery was good for black people and the masters were kind. Mm. So she took something and showed the complexity uh, and the resonance and how it keeps reverberating and how we keep seeing it happening. And so... 
that's the beauty of that to me, is to bring complexity to things in honor of our children who want to know more mm. than you do. I, I, almost, <laughs> I almost can't deal with old people. Okay. <laughs> We love you. Uh, well, I, and I have to say that when I look at those pictures, um, what I want to ask is the white women and men who are screaming, what is it that you think you're losing? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the, the, I think one of the reasons people are afraid to confront this history and give it more than a page is that they might have to ask grandma. Yes. Or might have to ask grandpa, what did you think you were going to lose if Minnie Jean sat in a class with your child? And that's the question we don't ask when we talk about history. We actually have people of color all having this conversation, yep. right? Among one, one another, and we want it to be done. But we're the only ones talking about it. So we have to start asking those questions outside of our own group. Well, I want to thank you very much. Um, Minnie Jean Brown Tricky, civil rights activist, um, and, ooh, let me go over here, a member of the Little Rock Nine, and Nicole Hannah Jones, Pulitzer Prize winning, I love saying that, journalist, and the creator of the 1619 Project. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you both. Your time, your work, your wisdom. Thank you both. God bless you.